Hi and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. This week I was going to do yet another nitrogen laser video because I've built yet another nitrogen laser. Uh, unfortunately I've run out of nitrogen gas so I thought I'd show you guys an old argon laser. Uh, so here it is. This is an old spectrophysics uh, 183 argon laser. It's capable of outputting around about 40 milliwatts on several wavelengths all at once. Uh, this particular argon laser, I'm afraid to say, is on its last legs. Uh, they do age and they don't age very, very well. It's got about 10,000, well, well over 10,000 hours on the meter. Uh, it spent a lot of time in storage and lately it's become sort of very, very difficult to start. Um, occasionally this thing uh, ignites down one of the return bores instead of the actual bore. So if we're lucky, tonight we'll be able to fire this thing up and take a look at it. So let's go. This is the power supply used to drive small air-cooled argon lasers. Got a couple of very large uh, connectors on the front here. The one on the left supplies the tube heater voltage, which is about 3 volts at 30 amps or so. It also supplies the anode voltage, which is about 100 volts. Uh, and the current for that range is between like 3.5 and, and 10 amps. The other connector there is for uh, ancillary uh, connections to the head. So we've got things like thermal cutout, light feedback and other bits and pieces. On the right hand side here, I've got a homemade uh, controller for this. These things, when you pick them up, rarely come with controllers. They have a, a DB25 connector on the front there. Uh, and you can basically control the argon laser. So we've got three switches here. The first switch is uh, run and idle. So when it's in a down position, the argon laser is just idling, which is to say it's running at the minimum output power. If we flick it up, then we can do things like controlling the current. Uh, the second switch tells us whether we want to control it by uh, current of the discharge or we want light feedback. And then the third switch tells us uh, how, what to display on the readout here so we can display milliamp, uh, amps or milliwatts so we can uh, display either the tube current or the output power itself so pretty pretty straightforward you can get the circuit diagrams for these on sam's laser fac and i'll link that in down below in the corner there we have a very large fan air-cooled argon ion lasers generate an awful lot of heat and uh, you know for all of the light that we get out of it which amounts to you know maybe 50 milliwatts of optical power uh, we consume about a kilowatt uh, of electricity and we need to get rid of that heat as well they're amazingly inefficient lasers i'll power this thing up uh, this will be very loud so we'll see how well this works out so there's the fan on uh, and i'll switch back to the power supply and we'll turn the laser on So we've got all the cooling fans running now, so we'll turn the key and wait and see if the argon laser starts up. You just have to be patient, there's like a 10 second delay. And there we are, we've got current. Uh, this meter I have to multiply by 10, it's just a standard voltmeter, and I'm reading like the voltage output from the DB25, so it's actually 3.9 amps. Uh, so this thing is idling at the moment. Uh, if I switch it over to milliwatts, now we're at, we've actually got 6.4 milliwatts of output. So I'll switch back to current and then I'll shift the camera around and we'll take a look at the laser. So here's the laser running. Uh, you can, should be able to see the, the beam coming out there, hitting a mirror over the other side of the bench and then onto uh, this target. It's very, very bright, even at, uh, even at 6 milliwatts or so, this looks insanely bright. So I'll go down here and turn the current up. We'll see how far we can push this. So we'll put it in run mode. We'll put it in current control mode. And we'll start turning up the current here. So we're at four and a half amps now. And then five. Six and a half. Now I have to be very slow when I'm turning this, uh, turning this up. We can't just crank it all the way up. It doesn't like it. We'll try and get to 7 amps, which will be about its not, not far off its running current there. Really, really bright output. So we're running at about 8.5 amps tube current here. I've put a block in front of the beam and I've put a, a dark coloured balloon on the bench. Uh, so we'll see if we can pop it. Awesome. If you've seen my other videos uh, on dye lasers, you'll know that I use a diffraction grating to tune the dye laser. 
I've actually set up a diffraction grating in front of the argon laser here and it splits the beam out into all its component colors uh, and the, the beam appears on the two targets at the back. Uh, one of them is very, very bright. This is our uh, first order reflection, uh, probably too bright for the camera to pick up, but I've also set up a target here uh, that gets the second order reflection so we can take a look. So I'll try and zoom us in there. So now that we're zoomed in, we should be able to see uh, the individual colors themselves. On the left hand side, we've got a bright green spot, uh, which is about 515 nanometers. It's actually 514.5. Um, two spots over, we've actually got 488 nanometers. So the middle uh, turquoise spot is the common argon laser uh, line there. If I go down and start turning the current up, we'll see the number of lines actually increases. So let's crank it up a little bit. So now we should be able to see many, many more lines. We've got two green lines have appeared. Uh, some of the violet and blue lines have split uh, into multiple lines as well. In total, this generates nine lines of coherent light, which is really, really nice to see. So I've just turned the room lights out here and I've just got uh, a bit of daylight coming in through the window. I've set up the diffraction grating so that the beam is pointing towards the camera and it's really, really nice to see. So there's our um, 515 nanometer line that I've just put my finger in. I've got the two green lines. I've got the 488 nanometer common argon line. And then we've got the remaining blue and violets off to one side. So here's another shot of the uh, argon ion laser coming out of the, the door of my lab here. really nice. Thanks for watching this episode of Les's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below and I'll see you guys next time.